the uh, the style was crazy then. But anyway, let me get back to New York. So we would go to New York and uh, we would visit. And I swear I couldn't bring enough tapes there because the music was jamming so hard. That was where you had you had DJ Red Alert on Hot 97, I guess, at that time. I think that was a station at that time. You had, um, you had uh, was it Chuck Chill Out also on the station? You had Melly Mel, I mean Melly Mel, you had uh, Marley Maul, I think, on, on BLS. Or maybe I got all of that backwards, but somebody was on BLS and somebody else was on the other channel. But anyway, it would be mixes going at the same time, man, on both stations. And, and I would go crazy, like, I can't capture all this music. I mean, it was music you never heard before. I'm like, oh, listen to this new Run DMC. I've never even heard it before. So I'm trying to capture it, man. I'm, I'm putting my cassette tape in. I'm trying to I'm trying to record off the radio because that's what we did. We had cassette tapes and we would record what we can off the radio. Man, these things would just go. I would just put I would just hit record. I didn't care about the commercials coming on any of that cuz it's like I couldn't capture it. And I couldn't sit there the whole time and and get it, man. But I would, I would sit there and try to get as much as I could from those radio stations because they were jamming nonstop. And, and they would just play this music just nonstop. The only time we would hear it, a lot of times, would be in mixes or, 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 or it would, you know, some kind of flow down. And you'd be like, man, that was something crazy I just heard new. But they, they were playing a regular rotation up top in New York. So I'm capturing this, like, this new, new, this new uh, Run MC, this new Fat Boys. Yo, did you hear this? You know what I'm saying? So the beats were new, fresh, and, and exciting, man. These mixes were. It was like no other. And if you had this mix and you brought it back home, everybody, it was to die for. Like, yeah, I got this mix, man. I got that new New York mix. The Hot 97 mix, man. The new Red, the new red Alert mix. Or the new Chuck Chill Out mix. Or the new Marley Mall mix. Or whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? Bringing it back. You were the man because you had that mix. Hell, you probably could sell it. Um, The crazy thing back in that day... Uh, was man the styles and 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 a lot of stuff <laughs> a lot of stuff is going away but some of that stuff has come back I mean for real I mean think about it the hairstyles we went through I mean we would rock the the high top fade of course but even before that you had the Jerry curl you had the Jerry curl you had a shag you know what I'm saying you would rock the shag or a Jerry curl a high top or you would, even at a certain point when you had Kwame with all the polka dots coming out, he had a little piece of a little blonde spot in his hair. People were rocking that. They they rocking that now. I'm like, okay, y'all bringing that Kwame stuff back with a little blonde spot in your head. And it was it was even a time when people would actually use peroxide and and bleached all that hair. They'd even make it blonde or it'd be like a reddish color, but. There was a lot of crazy phases back then, man, when it came to style. I remember one time in the Pool News, I was actually walking through the mall, man. I mean, this is a crazy story. So, I had my bomber on. I had an Adidas shirt. Actually, I didn't have a bomber on. I had an Adidas shirt. And we had a place in the mall you can get anything written on the back. Any kind of, put all, what kind of letters on it. It was like one of those press shops where they would press or whatever you want on the back. So back in the day, you know, I used to call myself Cool E Rock. You said you had that rock on your name, man. But I was Cool E Rock because I used to rap there. So, yo, I'm Cool E Rock. So they put, because at one point I was K Rock. And, you know, that made sense. But I wanted to make it expand itself to Cool E Rock. So I was like, okay, I'm going to put Cool E Rock on my, on my back of my shirt. And uh, I had the gazelles on. And when I had my gazelles on, folks like, man, you like DMC. So I rocked my black Kango, my gazelles, and my Adidas shirt with cool you rock on the back. And some jeans I might have had on. I don't know, some pinstripe joy dash. I don't know what it was. In. But anyway, we were walking through the mall, me and my brother. We decided to go. Th- I want to say it was Chick-fil-A that back in the day. We got an ice cream cone, you know what I'm saying? We were walking through the mall. We had a crazy problem back in the day, man. The gangs were a little bit crazy. It wasn't the same type of gangs like Crips and Bloods, but these was just a 
it was a social clique of dudes that would, yeah, they would jump you, man. They beat you down. But they weren't nationally affiliated. They were, I think we had some, one was called The Boys. This is in Virginia. They would call themselves The Boys. I mean, they were huge, huge group of dudes. And uh, so The Boys. Uh, got my man Jersey Vern joining us in here. Let me see if I can catch him, man. Hold on, hold on. Hello? Yeah, man. What's going on, man? It's the number one Chief Rock in Jersey Burn. What's up? What's good with the Chief? Chief joining. Hey, let me finish this story right quick, Chief, and then I'm going to chime you in. All right. So, so, so anyway, we're in the mall, and I run across this group of dudes. I'm like, oh, man, that's a whole group of dudes, man. A lot of dudes there, and they show one looking like they was, you know, saying, what's up? So, we walk, and my brother like, don't worry about it, man. We chilling. We eating ice cream. I'm like, what? Yeah, that mean. So anyway, <laughs> we walking by, man, and uh, I noticed probably about four of them splintered off a little bit. We go to another side of the mall, they behind us. We go to another side of the mall, they, they behind us. My antenna was up like, yo, somebody go down. But my brother, he was like, man, don't worry about it, man. We chilling. Man, we get outside. I see some girls walking towards us. And I hear some footsteps behind us. Ran up on put do do Dude, them bust me inside my head with a big, huge wooden brush. Ran up, hit me inside the head with a wooden brush. You know what I'm saying? I was stunned at that time. Just bent over, just folded over. I never hit the ground, man, but you know what I'm saying? I was, it was a, the feeling of stunning, man. It's like, you don't know what happened, man. It's just like, what in the heck just happened? You know what I'm saying? And he was hitting me. My brother said, other two dudes was like, yo, come on, let's get it. Like, they was daring him to get on. At that time, no, he did not engage, so I should have beat my brother down to this day for not helping at that time. But they ended up running off. I still never fail or nothing, but it was just weird, the feeling of being stunned like that, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know, man, I think it was maybe a gang initiation. They just like, yo, pick them dudes up. Go get them dudes right there. He jumped them. And that's how I went. So anyway, nothing came out of it. It was just a crazy story that I just had to share. But that was me walking around, stunting with all that gear on. And that's pretty much what it led to. <laughs> it just brought attention to me. Like, who is that dude? Yo, take him out. And that's what it was. Anyway, what's good, Chief? How you doing this morning? Man, I was about to jump in the shower until I heard you talking about, you know, all the happenings back up top. You know, back in the days, man, uh... I just want to chime in on a couple of things that you probably missed out on as far as gear. All right, you know, go ahead and tell me, Chief. Um, um, shell, shell tour Adidas, I still have those. You know, I wear those up to the day. You had the Pluma. You had the um, PF Flyers. That go way back. You had the Chuck Taylors that they're trying to bring back, but they can never bring them back. The original Chuck Taylors with the bomb. You know, it's just something different about them back in the days. You know, uh, you had, uh, you know, like I said, the kangaroos, Walter Payton used to sport those, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And whatnot, man. You know, and then you talking about hair dudes, right? Um, which I still can grow some hair at the age I am now. Uh, the box fade, I'm sporting that now, you know, old as I am, you know, still out there trying to grow a little hair, you know, but, uh, yeah, man, those were the days, man, back in the days. And matter so, of fact. So you had them suede, you had, you had them suede Adidas? Oh, I had I had suede pumas. Suede pumas, yeah, always, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, I always always rocked the uh, patent leather uh, shell toe Adidas, man. With um, the fat laces, different color ones, you know. Did you have the fat laces? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, we was we was serious about the laces, man. You know, you know, having them in all different styles. You know, with, with yeah. uh, the uh, let me see, I'm trying to think of the styles, man. Where you you had like. Uh, it was like boxed up. I can't think of the name that style, man. But um, yeah, you spent you spent some time putting the laces in. <laughs> yeah, man. It it was, it was crazy putting them laces on, man. You had to get your laces in right. You just couldn't put the laces in, man. You had to have a pattern to them laces. Oh man, yeah. If you ain't have them right, they talk about you, man. Yep. You know what happened? You know why you got you know why you got hit in the head with that brush? Because your gear was too fresh. <laughs> exactly. Too fresh. They know that you're a newbie. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody else, you know, sometimes people uh, buy some fresh gear, man, and take it 
to wash it, right? Then they iron and starch it up a certain way. And that's how you knew you was from up top, you know. But people that came down up top and they bought some new gear, like, you, you were fresh. You was B-boy style, you know what I'm saying? But it's just that yours was too new, you know. That's what happened, man. That's why they did that. They were just testing you, man. But, you know, mm -hmm. it, was all, it was all about love, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, hey, man, I, I can remember, you know, the big box radios on your head, walking down, then you put it down, and, you know, your, your jam come on, everybody out there jamming like it's a box party, you know. Um, hey, man, I don't know if you ever remember this cat right here. That's why I get the first part of my name, besides the number one. But uh, Chief Rocker Frankie Crocker used to play on BLS in the in the evening times, like from two to six, man. Yeah. Uh, he had one of them smooth voices. He was like this. This is your number one. He said, this is your DJ, Frankie Crocker, the Chief Rocker. You know, <laughs> come to this, day, this lovely summer day in the New York City boroughs. You know, what's happening? You know, that, that, that was Frankie Crocker, man. He was, he was smooth. He, I think he was originated from Miami, but he came up to New York and he just took the airwaves airway by, just took it by the throat and took it and just dragged it off through New York, man. Everybody loved Frankie Crocker, man. All right, Chief, let me ask you this, bro. Because I was a little young at that time, so I can't go back as far with the club scene. You know, I, my, my relation to the club scene was the 90s Atlanta version, because I was a man by the time I got here. I was 19, 20, 21 here in Atlanta. So back in those right. days, that would be the 80s for you. How were the clubs then? Tell me your experience with the clubs, oh. and, and what clubs oh, were they? Oh, man. Oh, man. You had, you had the garage that you would stay open until like 6, 7 in the morning. You come out of there, man, the sun will beat you down and, it's, and just the brightness. You had uh, Civil Shadow. You had Roxy. You had um, the Starship. You had, uh, let me see, let me see. Let me go back, man. With so many clubs, man. Uh, uh, I used to hear about the Latin Quarter. Yeah, Latin Quarter. There you go, yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you about the, the club. Um, that Tony Humphreys used to play at and bring people from everywhere, man. I mean, Washington, Baltimore, Virginia, Connecticut, as far as Massachusetts. And that was Zanzibar, downtown North New Jersey, man. That place was... Because um, Tony Humphreys was the man, and um, for some reason or another, man, he used to make that place hot every Friday and Saturday night, man. You know, that was a tough ticket to get into, man. You know... That was another one, man. Stayed over till like five, six in the morning. You coming out of there, man? You know. So, so um, yeah, the club scene was, man. It was crucial back then, man. I got a story about Biz Marquis, right? Um, he used to date a young lady. This was while this when I had my second son. I had got married and everything. I was living in a weekway section in the north, and um, this young lady that lived two doors down from me, her mother used to babysit my son. She was a hairdress. Uh, her younger sister was a DJ, right? And um, right. Biz Marquis, I don't know how he got to meet her, but, um, you know, he was liking her. But, see, he thought that she was one of them groupie-type girls. This girl right here was about trying to get her own beauty power back then, right? That's how deep it went. And um, she gave this joker a diamond bracelet. You know, instead of him, you know, instead of her trying to milk him, her, she pulled down her pocket and brought him, but she was digging the dude. She didn't really know about his fame or stats or none of that. This when his cousin Vaughn Lee was working at the record shop in Elizabeth, New Jersey. So they was at a birthday party for her sister, the DJ, at, over at the house. Man, I had just came back from the movie with the family. So, you know, I said, let me go over there and see what's happening, you know. I goes over there, he in there, whatnot. So, you know, I'm in there getting my groove on, having a good time, then... Next thing I know, they asked me, um, Biz need to ride down to, um, let me see what the next club sensation. That was downtown North, right? Yeah. So, you know, I was like, ain't no problem. Back then, that's when the Berettas first came out. I had a Beretta. So I said, ain't no problem, you know. So we ride downtown. You know, I'm talking to him. He told me he went to Long Island, LIU, to college and whatnot. You know, his cousin, was Vaughn Lee, was in the back. He never said too much. You know, we kicking and going on down and whatnot. 
soon as we got down that way, I don't know how they knew business.